Yes, sir. If you're a so-called black man living in this corporation we call USA, they want you to understand that you're just cattle in this civilization. If you try to ruffle any feathers, show your employers, your employees that you have a mind of your own, you will get demonized, you will get criticized, ostracized, whichever derogatory term that you could think of. All of those terms, all of those actions, reactions will get directed. They will get thrown right in front of your face because people will look at you like, who do you think you are? Just be a blue collar. Just be a white collar individual. Get your paycheck. Go home and come back tomorrow. Rinse and repeat. Growing up, watching Duke basketball, the perennial powerhouse in this NCAA powerhouse corporation that makes billions of dollars off of the backs of young individuals so-called black so-called white it doesn't matter because what i'm gonna say is gonna relate to caucasians also but so-called black men are the biggest cattle in this corporation called usa and they don't want no brothers to wake up they don't want you to make moves for yourself they want you to just shut up get your check do your labor, go home, and come back. But when you start to think for yourself, when you try to come up with any solutions, any better solutions for your life, even for your employer, they will try to take that idea, use it as if they came up with it, or they will try to combat you or come at you for even trying to think of anything outside of the box besides just being a worker. That's why, not for nothing, I got to give a round of applause to LeVar Ball, to any individual that jumped out of high school that said, yo, forget about the NCAA, because you mean to tell me you have a corporation, a sports industrial complex that makes so much money to where they're paying the coaches millions of dollars, but the players don't get a dime. The players are what brings the big bucks. The players are what has these individuals sitting on couches talking about March Madness, and they don't make a dime. They can't take any endorsements, any incentives, and if anything, the uh, the team gets a sanction, the player gets demonized. Meanwhile, you're taking these players from the slums. That's why these players have no sense of reality from where they come from. They have no sense of reality about the about the situations of racism of anything of that nature because they got pulled out and they got brought into a situation to where they're around majority Caucasians they're in a better situation and then basically they're just gonna toe that line because they don't want to mess up their situation so now you got players that are just like yo forget the NCAA well I'm gonna go there when I could just go overseas for a year and just come back and just join the NBA since I'm a prospect anyway why don't I just do what's best for me now, so when you do what's best for you, they're going to call you a sellout. Oh, you quit on your team, this, that, and the third. But meanwhile, when these teams do what's best for the team, nobody bats an eye. Draymond Green was talking about in the NBA how they could just shut down players and nobody wants to talk about it. But when a player wants to demand a trade, now he gets called everything out of the book. It's a crazy double-edged sword. It's a crazy double standard that's about to die down because the NCAA is dying left and right. Nobody's watching. Nobody cares about March Madness. Duke is trash this year. They're 13 and 11. Not only did Duke basketball didn't even make the big dance, they declined the NIT because it's pointless. So you have this prospect, freshman, Jalen Johnson. He opts out because he already had a little injury. So now, just think about it. If you blow your knee, everybody remembers Friday Night Lights, that movie when Booby Miles blew out his knee, his career is done. Now what happens when you decided that you wanted to play for your team? put everybody else's interest above yourself you're not thinking about your future they don't want you to think about your future they don't want you to think long term they want you to live in the now for them they want you to fill their pockets then if you happen to make it out good for you good luck best of wishes that's why I'm happy for these individuals that are finally waking up and putting their interests first because these schools been doing that for years and they're not giving any of these players a dime so now we have this guy right here, Seth Greenberg, who's basically a mouthpiece for the NCAA. And what is he going to do? He's going to try to throw shade at Jalen Johnson because he's mad that all of these players are deciding to wake up, putting their interests first, and deciding that they don't need the NCAA. The NCAA needs these players more than they need the NCAA, bro.
They could go overseas. They could go to China. They could take a year off. Look at LaMelo Ball. Look what LeVar Ball did. Took his son out of high school because he's like, you're a top prospect. You don't even need to go to school, bro. And look at him. He's the he's the front runner for being the rookie of the year. Not everybody wants to praise him and all this shit. But meanwhile, LeVar Ball was getting all the criticism when he decided to take him out of school. Those days are dying. If you didn't learn anything from the past year, you got to understand what's important, what's what and what's not and who got your best interest and who really doesn't. You know what I'm saying? Let's dive in. Let's see what these dudes talking about. So what does he decide to do? He decides to, in the morning, clean out his locker and move on. And, and that's fine. I have no problem with him doing it. But let's be honest with what it is. All right? What it is is he wasn't playing. He didn't like his role. All right? So he what did he do? He quit his team. Now, I can, I, all this brotherhood stuff. I see you wearing that fancy brotherhood sweatshirt today. And I understand that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Give me your argument. I didn't even say anything uh, yet. Give me your argument. I didn't I even say anything. All, we give all this brotherhood stuff. But here's the deal. That was a nice, shiny... New York City PR statement that came out of Duke, and that's fine. Here's the deal. The guy, the guy quit his team. Now, whether he, whether he was going to play or not, what he should have done is said, you know what? I'm not right. All right? I don't feel healthy. You've got the, a world-class medical center and world-class doctors right in Durham that could take care of you. I'm not right, but I'm going to stick with my guys. I'm going to come and suit up in terms of put on my, my travel sweat, sit on the bench, be with my brothers, but you know what? I can't help our team in the condition I'm in now. So I've got to take a step back. The other thing is, let's face it, Jay, you know it as well as anyone because you've seen it. You're close to a lot of these kids. All right. There's so much pressure on these one and done kids. There's so much unrealistic expectation. They, they think just walking from high school to college and if you just walk in and all of a sudden you become the guy. Well, it's just not easy. And that jump from the college to the NBA, the world's most exclusive club is that much more difficult. I think all of a sudden he was shocked. This is a lot harder than it, it, it looked like. Hey. And you see him fumbling with his words, man. He's just trying to come up with anything to make this dude look like a bad character. But what about those individuals that was in college for four years? They're riding the bench in the NBA or they're in the G League. These players could go straight to the G League and make some cash. I know y'all heard about Kevin Durant and Melo just made a little league so where these players can make six figures or something like that. You have so many individuals, those years, those times of playing three to four years are over because it's unnecessary. And if you blow out your knee, you tear your Achilles, or you do anything in that nature, they're not going to view you as the same pre-injury, bro. Your stock drops. So you're just going to hear this man just say all this bullshit. What? This is not that easy. My numbers aren't what they were supposed to be. I'm seeing my draft stock maybe potentially drop. I'm going to protect myself by quitting. Now, if he didn't feel like he was playing enough, if he felt like his draft status was going down, if he wasn't playing to stay there next year, you have to do everything in your power to conserve and actually dictate what that narrative is. I think that's important. It may not make it right from what we like to see in college basketball, because I understand what the brotherhood is and, you know, the, the fighting that I have with my family. I get that. If anybody doesn't know who this is, this is Jay Williams, and he was thorough in Duke college basketball he played with Shane Battier but he messed up his career because he had a bad motorcycle accident and now he's a commentator so he understands both sides and he's telling these players go do what's best for you because he knows how small that window of opportunity is to be in the NBA bro there's only a small percentage of people that's actually playing on those courts or making those teams then the rest, they're either going to the G League or they're going overseas to China because China has no individuals that could compete with the players that's in here in the U.S., bro. So just understand, listen to his perspective. He knows what he's talking about. One of the best college players I've ever seen, hands down. But it, it's, a, it's a different age and different day, and he has to do what's best for him. I, I was told, hey, Jay, I, look, I 100% agree with you on that. I 100% agree he's got to do what's best for him. Here's the deal. I'm an NBA general manager. I'm an NBA general manager, all right? And yes, I you're considering that. You're, you're, you're taking that into the fact, yes, you're factoring that into your decision. I, I, yes. I, no doubt about it. And, and he basically wasn't playing winning basketball. 
Duke isn't playing winning basketball at all, bro. So what is he talking about? He's trying to drop his stack. He's trying to attack his character like they do with so many so-called black individuals that think for themselves or any other athlete, but mainly so-called black individuals because that's the only individual that you see get dragged through the mud through the media and all these media outlets, bro. The only individuals that you really see get demonized are so-called black individuals, man. Let's keep it funky. Just that's plain and simple. So he's this is. And by the way, he's not going to be the first guy that does this. You're going to see this in the next three weeks. It is basically the end of the seasons can become the college bowl season. So he's he's the first one to do it, but it's going to become the college bowl season too. They've been doing that in college football also, man. We're going to start calling this guy Salty Seth Greenberg because he's understanding that his check is going to drop a little bit. NCAA is going to become less entertaining because it's pointless. You're making all this money from these one and dones from these individuals, and you're not paying them a dime. Multi-million dollar centers coaches getting paid bro multi-million dollar contracts all these doctors and this that and the third that's sitting in these centers meanwhile these players don't make shit i don't even know if they get to keep their uniforms or the sneakers that they play in bro it's that serious it's gonna happen jay well tell me if i'm wrong or right here you're gonna see either guys that still have eligibility aren't nba players are going to opt out put their name in the transfer portal and get ahead of the curve that's gonna happen in the next three weeks teams that are not in, in running for the NCAA tournament. And you're going to see guys that say, wait a second, Jalen Johnson did this. Uh, he's trying to protect himself. The problem is, what is Jalen Johnson protecting? Because the manner in which he did this and how he did this, if, why was he playing the last two games? If he was not 100%, what? why did he step on the court the last two games? And then if you said, why isn't he playing? He's quitting on his team. You see how they want to have their own double standards. They want to have their own perspectives on these situations. Only when it benefits them. He was playing and he wasn't even 100%. But if he was sitting out, then they would call him selfish like they're doing right now. You can't win with these clowns. So the best bet for you is to do what's best for you, period. Nobody out here has your best interest at heart besides you and your close ones, period, point blank. But Seth, here, here's the thing. It doesn't matter what he's protecting. All that matters is that he, he chose to protect what he wants to protect. And at the end of the day, that's his own prerogative. I, I don't think the narrative will be following Jalen Johnson that he's a quitter. I think if you want to take into account how does this young man deal with adversity, I, I think you can use those data points to factor into your decision on whether or not you want to draft him or how he handles playing in amidst hard competition. I think that's a narrative, but I, I don't. I wouldn't make the narrative that he's quitting. No, no, he's, not, he's not quitting on his team. He's making a business what decision. What would you say he's doing? He's making a business decision to take care of his family. We all know his his goal when he went to Duke was to get out of there after one year. He's had some ni injuries. He's been nicked up and banged up, coach, and you know this. And, and and the best thing for him to do is preserve his body right now. And you say there's going to be other guys that opt out. They should if they're not going anywhere. Thank you. Even though you're going to make complete sense, this man is still going to try to play devil's advocate and attack this man's character. Why wouldn't you try to protect your best asset, which is your body? If you're working a blue collar job and you tweak your back, why wouldn't you go out for a little bit on light duty, get workers compensation and come back to work when you're 100 percent? Why would you continue to work when you already tweaked your back and you're going to put yourself at a greater risk? to injure yourself and then you're going to be out or you never know you never know what the situation is they might try to say that you hurt your back on your own time you got to think about that man you really got to think how these people think and how these insurance companies think these insurance companies do not want to pay they're going to ask the individual the safety coordinator or whatever how do you feel about his story do you, you know what i mean you, you buying it they really ask these type of questions meanwhile you're out there blood sweat and tears rain sleet and snow for these employers and they don't give a damn because they will replace you at the drop of a dime man you're just cattle absolutely absolutely 100 percent. because guess what coach k can't promise you that you're gonna have an opportunity to take care of your family he can't he can't promise you that that you're gonna stay healthy but what you can do is promise yourself you can stay healthy by not putting yourself in harm's way.
Seth, let me ask you this. With the way he's playing, because I've been watching a lot of games and I've been deep into college basketball, not to your degree, but close. Um, what, ha what has been happening to Jalen Johnson's draft status over the last couple of weeks, months? Yeah, and again, I, I would think it's dropping because, you know, quite honestly, here's, yes. his, here's his game. He doesn't guard anyone. He's loose with the basketball. He's an inconsistent three-point shooter. What he is is he's a prospect or a suspect. He's got a little bit of yes. a floor game. He's got legitimate transferable size. In the new NBA, obviously, you can make him a positionless four if you want, if he can shoot it a little bit more consistently. He's a freaky athlete. But here's the deal, Jay Will, and, 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 and this, is the, this is the thing. What the data that they have on him now is obviously pure speculation because the data. One of the best players in the NBA right now who is as inconsistent from the three point player, from the three point line as any other player, is the Greek freak. Meanwhile, you have everybody on his jock strap because they want him to take the reins when LeBron retires and he wants to throw all this three point inconsistent and whatnot. And then he wants to just throw in there that he's a freaky athlete. Who else is a freaky athlete? Ben Simmons, John Wall before he got injured, Russell Westbrook before his he's on his decline. So many individuals, man, do not fall for the shenanigans that these individuals who are mouthpieces for these corporations try to throw at you, man, to make you fall for the bullshit and try to attack these athletes for putting themselves first. It's business out here, bro. Make a business decision. When you want to go ahead and look for another job because your employer isn't, pay isn't paying you enough, what is that called? Are you looking for your best interest? Are you making a business decision? Are you doing what's right for you because you got bills to pay for? The rent is due. Your car note is due. Insurance, phone bill. Your employer doesn't give a fuck, bro. Your employer wants to pay you pennies on the dollar, man. And wants you to be satisfied with that nonsense. Like, oh, we're paying you enough. Why can't you make it work? Nah, man. Get the hell out of here with that nonsense. What they have on him now is he's, he's not competitive. He couldn't play in the end of the game against Notre Dame because he wasn't competitive. He, he turned the ball over the first three times he touched the ball. I mean, the reality is that the way he's playing the game, he's not a winning player. So, like, is an NBA team going to risk a, a lottery pick? On a guy that's an if? I don't know. Maybe they do. I mean, look, the I, NBA is all about... If I, if I'm... How many busts have the NBA seen throughout these years? The, the one that I just shot to my memory right now is when the Pistons decided to take Darko Milicic over Carmelo Anthony. I don't need to keep going, man. If you know... Yo, name your favorite bust in the comment section, man. I'm not going to go through the list, bro, but come on, man. You got to come up with better arguments than the ones you's trying to spew right now, man. But if I'm an agent, if I'm Rich Paul, if I'm somebody representing him, I'm saying, look, by you playing, you are losing your position in the draft. We have to keep that mystique about you, and we have to focus on what you can do instead of being exposed. Now, a lot of things have changed this year. We're in the midst of a pandemic. You're coming back from an injury. If there's a way out, we have to start building your narrative towards getting you higher in the draft or at least keeping you stable. And that's not happening while you're playing at Duke. Draft status is going the opposite way. I'm just trying to tell you, I have a business perspective. Yeah, you will no. look at this trying to position your player in the best possible position for the draft. We're going to cut it there because we don't need to hear anything else that Salty Seth is going to say because anything he's trying to say is going to try to drop his stock. Meanwhile, you got all these individuals that stay in college and they're not doing a damn thing in the NBA. So if you're hot right now, make it worth your while, man, because the window of opportunity is small, bro. So many individuals out here, they wake up with a dream of going to the NBA, NFL, all these big-time leagues. Not only are they only going to be stopped at high school basketball or football, only so many are going to really make it to the big leagues. And I mean like NCAA and whatnot. Think about um Rich Paul. He had that dude, uh, I forget his first name. I think his name is um Darius Baisley. He had him get a, like, like an intern for Adidas and whatnot, and I believe he's on the Thunder right now. He's not one of the best players, but he's not one of the worst. We could go down the line and give you all the players that could be worse than him, but he's young. He has potential. He's a prospect, just like any individual that gets drafted. 
Come on, man. And if you want to bring this down to your life, to where you're blue collar, white collar or whatever, when you ever try to make a move for yourself, when you want to try to become an entrepreneur, when you want to try to make your own business on the side and whatnot, man, you're going to have people around you that are not going to be really in support of that move because they have that matrix mindset. They're stuck in the days. They're lost in the sauce. They're complacent with their situation, man. So you really got to separate yourself. Not everybody around you is going to be about business. Not everybody in around you, near you, or whatever, has to mind your business, period, point blank, man, do what's best for you, if you're a so-called black man, you got to understand that you're viewed as cattle in this corporation, they don't want you to have a critical mind, they don't want you to think for yourself, that's why they want you to just sit in the damn classroom, follow these obstructions, follow these rules, and become a blue-collar, white-collar slave in this situation, and just, just be comfortable with your life, man, <laughs> They don't want you to do better, man. They want you to just be as you are, man. Be an employee, man. Come on, man. Think out the box. I'll holler.